So when you start Unit 2 and it asks you to compare two different countries um, to Canada, I just wanted to go over some of the statistics uh, that you can use. And I think getting a, a variety of diverse statistics can make the comparison more thorough than if you pick the obvious ones. Um, again, what, how we want to do is objectively compare different countries and then if we can, research and analyze a reason why that difference exists. And so by doing sort of an apples to apples comparison of a, the same statistic, we know, you know, we can make a, a good comparison. When we know how they're different, we can go to explaining the reason why. So this is essentially, um, you're looking into wealth, but not just the wealth in terms of the dollar, but the overall wealth of a society of a country so obviously there's going to be how people uh, are doing economically how much property they own but then there's also uh, how they've developed themselves uh, how healthy they are, are uh, the, the wealth of their community uh, and even things like how is the wealth distributed is it equally distributed or is it uh, perhaps unfairly distributed so pretty basic starting statistic is gross domestic product per capita and we need to have the per capita because per person uh, the u.s being about 10 times the size of canada is going to have in if you just had in terms of the values would have 10 times the numbers, but they're not doing necessarily 10 times as well. We want to divide it by the number of people. So always make sure when we're getting these dollar figures that you've gone and, and the per capita to make a good comparison. And, you know, if you remember from ECO, if you haven't taken it, that gross domestic product is all the money that's been generated. So individual consumption, uh, investment into businesses and into stock markets, government spending, products that have been exported to other parts of the world but we uh, subtract things that have been imported because that's dollars that's leaving the country to go to another country so it's going to be consumption plus investment plus spending plus exports minus imports and you know here's an, an example of, of how the two countries compare uh, that the uh, u.s is uh, wealthier than canada you know, it can be good to show it over time, too, because you can this gives you in a sense of just, you know, how much uh, more things cost these days. So the U.S. does have quite a bit of an edge in terms of GDP per capita than Canada does in recent years. You might want to look into unemployment rate. Uh, people earn money by working. Uh, you know, sometimes there can be high stock market performance even though people are losing their jobs. So unemployment rate is just out of everyone who can work, and usually let's say that's 18 to 65, uh, who are actively looking. So if you're 19 next year and you're in university, you're not in the labor force, you're not actively looking, uh, who is unemployed? And it also tends to be what we would call a lagging indicator because you kind of get your results as a business. And then when you notice that you've had a bad month or two, then you might look to lay off people. Uh, so we, it's sort of a few months behind what has actually happened because businesses have to do all of their accounting, figure out whether they've been profitable or not. And then, you know, if they're doing well, they'll hire someone. Uh, if they're not doing well, they'll lay someone off, but it's not an instantaneous, you know, a concurrent indicator. And, you know, just to uh, look at it, now this is pre-COVID-19 because that's just it's just kind of gone straight through the roof and we don't know, is it just a blip for a couple of months? But here it is, uh, you know, in 2018, uh, you know, Canada has a little more unemployment than the U.S. and Mexico out of the three countries in the U.S., Mexico, Canada agreement, Mexico has the uh, lowest unemployment rate. Uh, I like income inequality. Uh, reading about 2020, uh, although there was huge economic trouble, uh, 44 million Americans losing their jobs, you know, 20% of 
uh, Canadians losing their jobs. There still were more, uh, you know, the more billionaires were created, you know, about 45 billionaires in the U.S. were created in 2020 during the COVID-19 crisis. So it, it might, there still can be some GDP, but it's not being shared equally. And it's those people losing the jobs, they're, they're burning through their savings, they're burning through their emergency fund, they're, they're in very, very rough shape. So even though the GDP might be there among the billionaires, uh, there are a lot of people who are in tough times. You might want to look at comparing the top quintile or the bottom quintile just to see like what the ratio is. And sometimes they can even give you top 10 to bottom 10. So, uh, you know, here is uh, an, an example. Actually, Mexico has the most income inequality. That top quintile has about 10%, sorry, 10 times the bottom the bottom quintile, the U.S. is still, you know, a, a big, you know, uh, it's worth worth a, a lot more, mo you know, money in the top 80% than than the bottom 20%. And Canada is is not as bad as the other two. It's a little a little more equal. So I encourage you to find some standard of living stats because money isn't everything and things like life expectancy uh, health the environment these are long-term questions of sustainability and i think we're also looking towards a more holistic definition of wealth not just a dollar figure so you know here uh we have you might want to you know look into how people um are working in different types of jobs. So here's uh, different types of jobs. Now, Statistics Canada does their survey every uh, 10 years. So the 2016 one was very disrupted because of what the previous government did. But here's kind of an example. Maybe you want to say, hey, in this country, you know, you can see there's a lot of uh, female Canadians working in sales and service. Uh, you know, uh, you might want to compare, compare those jobs because sometimes the sales and service jobs can be the first to go to more steady professional jobs uh, you know um, and compare the job distribution type that might sh you know show what people are doing in that in each country especially if you had a developing country versus a developed one how do people actually work that could be an interesting uh, comparison you know here we have people's skill level in Canada so the the 11.5, that's like management uh, positions. Uh, you know, then we ha have, um, so they, they have like an MBA. Uh, then we have, uh, you know, another kind of professional certification. 18% of people have a professional certification of some sort. Uh, and we have 31% um, require a post-secondary degree. 27% require some secondary school training, an OSSD or some occupation specific uh, training. And then 11% of the jobs you can just get with on the job training that don't have much of a skill requirement. So maybe you could compare different countries to what, what's the level of education that a typical worker would have. Life expectancy. So that would be if someone was born today how many years would they be expected to live? And it affects health care because it includes infant mortality rates. So if there is, you know, a high infant mortality rate, that's going to knock down the average age. It includes um, education because you're going to get a better job. You're going to get more money. It includes your, your lifestyle. There could even be a little bit of crime, you know, if there's a, a violent, uh, you know, a, a vi violence in the country that could lower it. So I think this is kind of uh, interesting. So you compare it over time. Uh, so obviously people are living longer than they used to. Um, but actually, you know, the gap in Canada is gone up over the U.S. Like our healthcare system appears to be functioning a little better because instead of just li living one year more, as would be the case in 1960, you live about three and a half years more. And uh, that can be because of the income uh, distribution, the health care, uh, people living healthier lifestyles. And actually, the U.S. in the last few years, the U.S. 
life expectancy has gone down. And to me, that's just a shocking, weird trend. Like that's the opposite of what we should be going for as a society. You know, it should be onward and upward. Uh, you know, so we can have education levels. So sometimes maybe you want to look at maybe children out of school. For example, if a child has to go work and they're, you know, 12 years old and they're out of school, that's going to affect their ability to l earn later on because the odds are they're not going to go back. Uh, it's going to reduce their educational attainment. Once people drop out, they're less likely to uh, return and do further studies. So you can, you can another stat can be educational uh, attainment. How far do most people go? And then uh, sometimes, you know, if you have developed countries, a lot of us they, they do the same, uh, like PISA math tests. You can, you might be able to con uh, compare standardized test scores to see which country. You know, actually Ontario tends to do really well uh, among the other regions of the world that are comparable. So, you know, here's um, how far people get in Canada. We have less than high school, we have high school, we have the trades, some college, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a professional a certification, a doctor's uh, degree. And so you can see that in uh, uh, the, the, U the US, um, it's, it's kind of weird, most of them tend to stop, like more people stop at high school in the U.S. and enter the workforce. But then on the other hand, in the U.S., more people continue on after college and, you know, they, they, they get their master's degree or their professional degree. Uh, you know, so why is that the case? You know, perhaps if the U.S. had had a history of some uh, manufacturing jobs, it doesn't require too much uh, too much college education. You know, people could enter those uh, um, workplaces, but then they're also vulnerable because as things become automated, as 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 manufacturing is outsourced, they don't have the same skill level to fall back on. So you can maybe even you can compare your 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 countries to how far the average student goes. Literacy rate, I think, is also linked to education because it affects uh, the potential earnings and also you know people who are literate tend to. Um, read well so I mean so live well live a little healthier they're a little more informed so here is the total world literacy rate and I just showed it this way you know to compare the two genders that men overall have a higher literacy rate and that's uh, just because women are pulled out of school in many parts of the world uh, early and they don't uh, attend you know, and it's just because they're to, for family responsibilities to work. Men sometimes are encouraged to study more. It's just to throw this out there. Here's sort of, you know, for the most part, life expectancy in the U.S. had been on a gradual upward trend, but it uh, has started to uh, reverse itself in recent years. So uh, if, if you do need to cite your statistics, where did you get them from? Make sure you have the con contributors, um, the date, the title of the graph, or the title of the table, and where you retrieved it from. So here are a couple of examples. Um, so, you know, Pew Hispanic Center, 2008 Hispanic Healthcare Survey, and then you say it's a data file, and then you see retrieved from, and you, there you put the link there. Uh, if you're having trouble finding data sources, uh, you know, the World Bank, UNESCO has great standards of living statistics. The OECD has the biggest countries in the world, like Europe and Canada and, and the United States. Uh, and Statistics Canada could give you some specific Canada gaps if you're looking for something for Canada. And uh, if that previous slide about citing uh, um, statistics in APA format uh, doesn't help you as some weird graph or a table you don't know what to think about it uh, there's more op uh, options online you can always find out how to cite an APA here are the resources I used <laughs>